It was 2012, and the violence was intensifying all over Mexico. There I was, taking a deep dive through thousands of pages of government records. I was working with New York Times reporter David Barstow, trying to find out if Walmart had paid bribes to open the way and expand in my country. We were still months away from finding proof when I confided my feelings of guilt. Here I was looking at zoning records and construction permits when my colleagues were documenting violence and cruelty never seen before in Mexico. I felt really like a deserter in times of war. David has a very soothing voice and he's responded, who is watching at the other, all the other things that are going on in Mexico? After letting this idea settle in, I was able to uh, recover my determination. I felt a similar sense of dislocation when I learned that ICFJ was honoring me with this Knight International Journalism Award. My first thought was, why me? As other colleagues that were covering the disappearance of 40, 43 young students, apparently by local police, I was deciding what message to share with you tonight. I resisted the temptation to point out at the many other reporters who may be more worthy of this award. Instead, what I did is I launched an internal audit, unleashing my personal squad of very ruthless accountants to examine my own work. And this examination uh, went back to clips dated 1992 and on, with stories on migration, corruption, poverty, um, the drug world, and health. I cannot stress how cruel reading one's old stories can be. It's horrible. Um, I did realize I had intuition from early, my early stages, but I had no clue of what a knot graph was all about. Well, I don't want to bore you with the details of this audit, but some of the thoughts that I arrived at allow me to stand before you tonight. A lot has changed since my years as a young reporter in Mexico. We now have free elections. We have access to information laws all over the country and a rigorous and growing community of NGOs and think tanks scrutinizing it all. Democracy is in the making, but I believe journalism hasn't served it all that well. As has been the case for decades, Many media in Mexico still feed off and serve as a loudspeaker for the voices of a very, very small elite. They devote time and space to bickering politicians and letting, they let public relations experts dictate the agenda. You would be amazed to see how little attention we pay in the media to issues that really affect the lives of the public. We are further hindered by the way Mexican media operate. Uh, reporters scramble to hand in three and more stories every day. We have few chances to do basic corroboration, let alone follow on a lead or investigate. Other obstacles to a free press remain. The media depend very heavily on government advertising. And of course, they are affected by the corruption and the drug-related violence that threaten to silence us all. Who is looking at all the other things that are going on in Mexico? This internal audit made me realize that this same question has driven me for years. Many other disobedient reporters have also stepped off the well-worn path and are taking a hard look at these tough issues. I want to thank my parents for injecting me with curiosity and awe, and my husband, Jorge, who's around here, for his partnership and loving encouragement. And I thank David for reviving my commitment in investigative reporting. And I thank ICFJ wholeheartedly for this award. I believe it recognizes the work of journalists who still feel adept debt, <laughs> sorry, to our audiences. Reporters who want to produce independent, rigorous, and insightful pieces. Thank you.